This is it. The year has come to an end. This is our last Parsha preview for the year 5780. So it's going to be a bit longer, and I'm dressed a bit more formal. What kind of a year has it been? In 1992, Queen Elizabeth had experienced the end of three royal marriages and a fire that destroyed 300 rooms in Windsor Castle. The Queen referred to that year as Annus Horribilis, a horrible year. The truth is what she experienced was nothing compared to what we've experienced this year as Americans and as Jews. This has been a horrible year. Here in America, there are protests on the ground and fire in the sky. A pandemic racing across the country which has taken the lives of 200,000 Americans. Who would ever imagine that this great country of ours would be ranked 28th in the world in terms of quality of life behind countries like Slovenia and Estonia. Israel is ending the year with the complete lockdown because of the coronavirus. The great synagogue in Jerusalem is going to be closed for Rosh Hashanah. Israel is a country that's so divided that it required three elections in the last year and a half. And for us as American Jews, we stand divided over the question of who hates us more, the extreme right or the radical left. This has been a horrible year, no question about it. That's the bad news. The good news is Rosh Hashanah is here. And the whole idea of Rosh Hashanah represents great news for our future. Staying home as much as I have these last six months gave me plenty of time to read. Two of the books I read that came out this year have a similar theme, what a great people we Jews are and how much we've contributed to civilization. There's this book, Genius and Anxiety, How Jews Changed the World, 1847 to 1947. And then came, just this month, Jonathan Sachs's newest book, Judaism's Life-Changing Ideas. When you read these books, it's really incredible how much Jews have contributed to civilization. But perhaps our greatest contribution is found in an oldie but goodie book called The Gifts of the Jews by the noted historian Thomas Cahill. According to Cahill, the Jews' greatest contribution came right from the beginning in biblical times, and it was a lesson about the cycle of life. What we taught the world is that there is no cycle. Ancient people believed in a cyclical world, a world in which everything just keeps repeating itself. No event is unique. Everything is just going to happen over and over again. Judaism alone differed. And our calendar indicates that. While others followed the sun, you know what King Solomon said? There's nothing new under the sun. Jews followed the moon, the moon which constantly renews itself. Indeed, the word in Hebrew for month is chodesh, the same root as the word chadash, new. The Jews' way of viewing life had a view where events don't merely repeat themselves. Events actually move forward. This, Cahill considers, may be the greatest idea that human beings ever had. And because of this view, writes Cahill, and this is fascinating, most of our best words, new, adventure, 
unique person, vocation, time, history, future, freedom, progress, spirit, faith, hope, are the gifts of the Jews. We are the people who gave the world the idea that a horrible year need not be repeated. We gave the world the message of hope. How do we bring the high holidays to a close? What are the last words that come off our lips as we go back into life? We say, next year in Jerusalem. Think of what it meant for our people to say that year after year, for nearly 2,000 years after Rome exiled us, Muslims murdered us, Spanish jury was expelled, and Christians tortured us. Think of what it meant to go through pogroms and inquisitions and exile and holocaust to keep saying, next year in Jerusalem. No other people did that. They gave up hope. We never did. I have here a t-shirt I bought when I was in Israel in January, which I intended to wear to the Pesach Seder. But that had to be canceled, and I would wear it for Rosh Hashanah, but after being home for six months, it doesn't fit. But you have to look at this. Every other ancient people, ancient Egypt, gone, Philistines, gone, Assyrian Empire, Babylonian Empire, Persian Empire, Greek Empire, Roman Empire, Byzantine Empire, Crusaders, Spanish Empire, Nazi Germany, Soviet Union, gone. Every other ancient empire, after being defeated and exiled, lost hope. Not the Jews. So it's quite understandable why the national anthem of the state of Israel is the Hatikva, which means hope. So let's go into this new year with hope. And there's plenty of reason for hope. Israel in recent months has made huge steps towards peace. Here in our country, a vaccine is coming. And with all its issues, no country has ever been more favorable to the Jews than this country of ours, a country which contemporary sages refer to as a Medina Shel Chesed, a country of kindness. We Jews in America have never been stronger. Yes, we do have enemies from the left and the right. But thank God they spend most of their time trying to destroy each other. So today with Rosh Hashanah beckoning, let me wish you a good and sweet year with our people fulfilling the hope. L'shana haba Yerushalayim. We returned home. And next year and the year after, until the end of time, we will be in Jerusalem. Shana Tova. Amen.